Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can deploy a VPS on Vulture Hosting. You can use this VPS for hosting any kind of application, website or anything. So first thing you have to do is sign up for Vulture Hosting. You can use my referral link from the description or pinned comment. Creating an account is very simple. Just use your email and password and it's very simple to do. Then log into your Vulture dashboard here. You will see it's currently empty because I do not have any server right now. So you have to click on compute here and then click on deploy server. If you do not find this option, you can also do the same thing by going to top right here and clicking on this button deploy plus then click on deploy new server. It will take you to the same place. Now you have to select a CPU. I would suggest you for most use cases, a shared CPU is good enough. And this is also the most affordable option. You can explore the dedicated CPU if you want, but it will be also expensive and it is good for high intensive tasks or if a lot of users are going to use your server. And cloud GPU will be more suitable if you have some AI application or you want to run some machine learning kind of things, then you can use that. And bare metal is also for advanced users. So after selecting shared CPU, you have to select the server location which is closest to your user. You can explore all the Vulture servers across the globe. They have servers almost everywhere. So for this example, I will select Frankfurt and then scroll down. Here you have to pick a plan for your server. Here you can see currently there are three categories. Cloud compute is the cheapest option and it is good enough for most simple applications like creating a website, WordPress website or a simple VPN server or something like that. It is good enough. Then if you want more performance, you can select high frequency or high performance. The price will be a little different. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to go with the $5 per month plan. The $6 per month plan is also a good option. Uh, if you go here in high frequency, they have the $6 per month plan starting. And I think this is a good deal, but just for this tutorial, I'm just creating it for test purpose. So I do not need high frequency or high performance and I will select the $5 per month plan. And I would not suggest you to go with any plan that has less than one GB of RAM because it will practically make it unusable. So it's better to select at least one GB. However, the recommended RAM will be two GB, but one GB can run most applications. And if required, you can upgrade it later. Now on the right sidebar here, you can see the summary of your current selection. One core CPU, the memory is one GB, storage is this much. Now you can enable or disable backup. Currently you are getting charged $1 for this much backup. And depending on the plan you select, the backup price will also be different. And just for this test server, I will disable the backup feature and then click on configure software now you have to select the operating system depending on the application you want to deploy on your vps server you can select an operating system which is preferred by that application or if there is no specified operating system then you can either go with the ubuntu or you can go with the debian both of them are quite stable operating system and you can select either of them. Now, if you want, you can explore the marketplace apps and I would really suggest you to do that because there are high chances the application you want to deploy on your VPS server would already be available in the marketplace and it makes it super easy to install it. Now I will select to show more options here. You can see here there's so many options, Laravel, Coolify, WordPress, Cloud Panel, C Panel, Cyber Panel, and WireGuard VPN, Node.js, and uh, there are so many options. Okay, there are two pages of these applications, and you can explore all of them. There is also Minecraft, and a lot of VPN options. So I will go back to the first page, and for this tutorial, I will select Cloud Panel. Cloud Panel provides a very nice user interface to create websites. You can watch my full tutorial also on that. So I will select this and then scroll down. And we are going to skip the SSH key and firewall settings right now. We can enable them later. In host name, you can enter a server identification. For example, I will put server1.mydomain.com. And in label, this is just for your internal identification. It doesn't affect the server in any way. So I will label it test server. 
Now from additional features, I will select free public IPv6 address here and we do not need other things. Now on the right sidebar here, you can again see the summary of your selection, verify everything is correct and you can see the total price here. Now click on deploy. You can click on the server name here and it will take you to the more details page. Right now you can see the message here that the server may still be installing and booting up for a few minutes. So I will suggest you to wait for 5 minutes and then refresh the page again to see if the installation is complete. You can also see the progress from the view the console option here. You can also find the option here. If you click here, right now you can see it is not installed completely and it's still in progress. So I will now just wait for 5 minutes and let the installation complete. And from the overview tab here, you can see all the details of your server. This is the location, IP address, IPv6 address. This is the user login and password, which we will use once the installation is complete. And from here, you can also change the test server label and see the auto backup status. And if you have installed any application, you will find the instruction how to log in for the first time. You can see this is the server and this are my login details which we will use to access the administrator portal. And on the top right here, you can see more options for your VPS server. You can log into the console here. You can stop the server and restart it. You can also reinstall the server and you can use this delete icon to destroy your server. Now, as I told you earlier, just using the server stop option, it is like shutting down your computer. If you just shut it down, the VPS is still there. It's just in shutdown condition. So it will continue to get built. And if you want to completely stop the billing, you have to destroy it completely. Because a lot of time people do this mistake, they stop the server and think the billing will stop, but it will not. You have to completely destroy it. Only then it will stop. Now let's go back to overview tab and see if the installation is complete. So I will open the console here again. Looks like it is complete, but just to be sure I will close it and refresh the page here. Now you can see that warning is also not here. So now I will follow this instruction and let's log into our open VPN server. I will open this in a new tab. You will see this error. Do not worry because we do not have a valid certificate yet. Click on advance, proceed and let's go back here. From here, you have to copy this password. Username is OpenVPN. Let's paste the password here. Click on sign in. And you can see this is the user agreement. It means our VPS was installed successfully and it's working. If you want to log in with SSH, then you can use this root username and password here. If you're using Mac, you can directly use the terminal and log in with SSH. For Windows, you can download a free application called Putty. You can also use the view console option here to log in, click here. Then usually you will see this option to prompting you to enter your login details. If it is not, then just hit enter. Then it will start showing you this information. Now our username is root. You can see here. So I will enter that now for password. Again, let's go back here. Copy our password. Now to paste the password here, you have to click on this option, this small icon here, then go to this option clipboard then paste your password here now click on paste after that hit enter you can see here let's close this if you directly try to paste the password here it will not work using the keyboard shortcut or the mouse button here so you have to use this option to paste your password and another important thing is the password is never visible when you enter in Linux here. So it will always be invisible, but do not worry if you have followed the instruction, as I told you, then it will work. You can see we have logged in and you can currently see the server status. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. 
If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. I will try to help you out.